Good afternoon and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Paul Harris and I am president of the City Club's Board of Directors. I am pleased to introduce today's speaker, Bill Strickland, President and Chief Executive Officer of Manchester Bidwell Corporation and its subsidiaries, Manchester Craftsman's Guild and Bidwell Training Center. A bit of the history of Manchester Bidwell. The Craftsman's Guild began in a donated North Side row house that Mr. Strickland secured while a college student at the University of Pittsburgh, where he earned a bachelor's degree in American history and foreign relations and graduated with honors. Today, the, the Guild's youth and arts program serves approximately 3,900 youth each year through classes and workshops in ceramics, photography, digital imaging, and design art. The Guild's jazz program is dedicated to preserving, promoting, and presenting jazz music by bringing audiences together with jazz artists at its music hall in Pittsburgh for performances and recordings. Mr. Strickland assumed leadership of Bidwell Training Center in 1971. The center provides market-driven career education created through strong partnerships with leading local industries and also offers associate's degrees and diploma programs in culinary arts, chemical laboratory technologies, health careers, horticulture, and office technology. A lot of variety there. Mr. Strickland is well known as a visionary, educator, entrepreneur, motivator, believer in the power of the arts to inspire, and a leader who has been highly effective in bringing people and institutions together to make his vision a reality. In seeking to share and implement his vision beyond Pittsburgh, he has cultivated collaborative partnerships in cities across the country. He has received numerous prestigious awards for his work, including 14 honorary degrees and the MacArthur Fellows Program, so-called Genius Award, for leadership and ingenuity in the arts. In 1998, he accepted on behalf of the Corporations Guild the Coming Up Taller Award presented in a White House ceremony. He has served as chairman of the Expansion Arts Panel of the National Endowment for the Arts, or the NEA, in Washington, D.C., and served a six-year presidential appointment as a council member to the NEA. I am pleased to present on behalf of the City Club of Cleveland, Bill Strickland, President and Chief Executive Officer of Manchester Bidwell Corporation. Uh, it's nice to be here. Uh, I've really tried to uh, prepare a speech that was not lofty. Uh, I wanted to prepare a speech that really reflected the truth of my life and the things I believe in. And unfortunately, when you get to be something of a public speaker or a public figure, there's a tendency to want to generalize about your life experience and some of the things that you believe about the world. And I don't want to do that. What I want to do is to tell you what I really feel and what I think. Because I'm staking my life on the fact that what I think and what I believe uh, will do a lot of people, in addition to myself, some good. Uh, one of the things that Paul didn't tell you is I used to fly airplanes for a living. Uh, that was not, it's not on my resume right now, but I used to fly Boeing 727s for an airline called Braniff. A great idea, wrong airline. <laughs> but it was a great idea and a wonderful experience. I met some wonderful people. And part of my motivation for learning how to fly airplanes was to prove to myself that I wanted to do the work in the community because I wanted to do the work in the community, not because I had to do the work in the community. By that, I mean it's very easy to go into places of great consternation and trouble and difficulty because those people will s accept you under almost any conditions. But I wanted to prove to myself that I elected to do this work because I wanted to be there. And by becoming an airline captain, it allowed me to think of myself as an airline pilot who had allowed himself, his life, to be led by people who were struggling. And I happened to think that that was an important decision and an important moment in my life to get resolved so that I don't have to wonder any longer whether I could sort of function in the larger society. 
I can function in a larger society fine. I have elected to function in the societies I'm going to talk about for a few minutes because in some respects I think if there is a higher power that my life may be guided by the principle that giving back may be the way that you ultimately define a life. So with that, I've actually written um, some remarks, which I'd like to read for you. And I'm very honored to be here as the luncheon speaker for the City Club. I had a chance to look at the distinguished list of people on the wall and in the uh, lexicon, and it only underscores uh, my honor, Jim, at being accepted here to present my ideas. And the fact that I was selected as the luncheon speaker today, given my background and life circumstances, in in itself a beacon of hope. Because once upon a time, I was an inner city public school kid, uh, failing academically and totally adrift, and was lucky enough to meet an art teacher named Frank Ross, uh, who was an accomplished potter. Uh, I was walking down the hallway of our high school and the art room door was open and I saw him make a great big old ceramic vessel and it was one of those life experiences when your guard's down and you're not expecting to see something. And it was a magical moment for me. And he turned around and says, can I help you? And I said, yeah, what is that? He said, oh, that's ceramics. I said, well, why don't you teach me how to do that? He says, well, get your homeroom teacher to sign a piece of paper that says you can come here and you're good to go. So for the remaining two years of high school, I cut all my classes and I went to the art room. But I was smart enough to give the teachers whose classes I was cutting the pottery I made, and they gave me passing grades. That's how I got out of place. <laughs> and Frank says, you're too smart to die. I don't want it on my conscience. You're going to college. And after I saw him make that ceramic vessel in class, it was my belief, and it still is, that it was not only a defining moment, it was a magical moment that altered my life permanently and in some respects started me on the path to speaking at the City Club. I became an apprentice to the art program at the end of that year. Mr. Ross took a job at a local university and declared he was not going to leave me behind to die on the streets like a lot of my friends. He drove me out to the University of Pittsburgh insisted I fill out a college application and I was admitted as a probationary student because I failed the SAT test never having seen it before. No one had taken the time to show me the test while I was in high school so when they presented this test at the University of Pittsburgh it was multiple choice so I kind of took out my pencil kind of marked it up and uh, didn't do very well in the test so I got in as a probationary student. Well, I'm very pleased to tell you that not only did I graduate from the University of Pittsburgh with honors, I'm now a trustee of that university <laughs> and was the commencement speaker in front of 13,000 people and got up and said, do not give up on the poor kids. They might end up being the commencement speaker one day. <laughs> uh, now, as Paul indicated to you in my introduction, Here's this kid who wins the MacArthur Fellowship, 14 honorary PhDs, airline pilot, ceramic artist, and now I can add to my resume speaker at the City Club. Uh, all from a kid who supposedly, based on my autobiography, uh, shouldn't have even got half of this far. And that's the point of the speech today. And that's the point of the story. So, I'm now on the board of Pitt. Uh, we're doing some interesting things in the world, and I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to be at that place. This story that I've just shared with you is uh, in a new book called Make the Impossible Possible. It sort of tells this whole story. It's kind of a Random House Doubleday book, and it's doing pretty well, and a number of colleges have adopted the book as their freshman reader because young people that I'm excited to share with you still have a conscience, and they care about their country. 